Hey guys, today I wanted to tell you a story about Bulk and Magic the Gathering and why Bulk is the only interesting long-term hold. Now, I don't mean new Bulk. New Bulk, the card quality, as has been stated by every other YouTuber, is quite poor. I don't feel like they are going to be near mint in the next few years. And overall, there's too much of it. I mean old Bulk. And old Bulk is readily available at this point in time. You can buy on Craigslist, you can buy on Facebook, you can buy it from a GP. No one is talking about old bulk. There was a time where Homelands was just, no one wanted Homelands. It didn't matter what was in Homelands or, there was nothing good in Homelands. There was maybe Baron was a dollar or more and then everything else was under a dollar. But now today you have four cards over $2.50. And these cards are just way out there because the Minotaurs, I mean, if you look at this, it's two double red, it costs four. Four is how much JSD Mind Sculptor cost. And JSD Mind Sculptor is in as many legal formats as this one. It costs four, it's a Minotaur, it's a one free, and all Minotaurs get plus one plus zero. No, and no format and no game is this considered a good card. I cost four, terrible, terrible card. I mean, I guess it comes into play as a two free for itself because it does pump itself, which is kind of nice. But due to Minotaurs, and now we get a Minotaur Planeswalker, the card has become something that no one would have predicted it would be and that's over $2. And I, I truly do believe this card is over $2 and there is demand on that. Because at $2, it's different when a card spikes to like 100 or $200 and there's not many copies in stock. There's plenty of these in stock. All right, next one from Homelands. Homelands benefited, and these old cards benefit from one very, very key component that you have to remember, reserve list card reserve list cards and that's it one day the bulk reserve list cards that you're having that you have and you're holding will become quite valuable i don't know when that day will be but i can almost assure you that day will be sometime it will happen sometime it's not a if it is a when and this is the perfect example of these cards which for the most part i mean yeah, I get it. Tribal was a big deal, but my gosh, this card was bad. Like it is so bad compared to the power level of today's cards or this card is three dollars and I don't believe it's I believe people would pay three dollars for this card. I believe people are paying three dollars for this card. So there's not this. Oh, well, speculators are just buying this out. No, I mean, people are actually playing this card in EDH. Is it a great card? No, it's a beautiful card, by the way. Like it is for a, um, a black card on a black border on with the white snow and the green. It's gorgeous. I mean, $3 just to own it, just to look at it because artwork was a lot better back then. And that is a big factor. One of the largest factors in my opinion, when people want to play Magic and they're willing to spend some money on it, they will remember cards they had when they grew up and people had this card when they grew up. I had it when I grew up. And I remember its artwork was always so stunning. We never used it, but the artwork was stunning nonetheless. And of course you have utility, Merchant Scroll, there's not much that needs to be said about this one. Anytime you have uh, tutoring abilities, it will be pricey. Uh, tutors are always some of the best cards in Magic because they pretty much, you pay a little bit more. This one, Sorcerer Speed, it goes straight to your hand, which I I like a lot better. I don't like losing card advantage. So something like Vampiric Tutor or Enlightened Tutor or that cycle, I'm not the biggest fan of. I'd rather have the card in my hand. And this is pretty good. So to summarize, there is a lot of value that you can get from buying old bulk collections because previously Homelands had zero value. Now it has some value. And this has happened with Fallen Empires. This has happened with obviously uh, the Dark. These sets that no one can even like, no one would even look at 
are just so much money today. And let's go to the top end. We have Diggeru, Dingeru, Diggeru, Homelands. And this one will only get better in time. I, I will promise you this, it, it's a $5 card. And the next time or a few years from now when we have more Minotaurs, it's gonna be a $7 card. And when we have even more Minotaurs, we'll be a $10 card. It is a very interesting card because if you have a Emiko Minotaur, it's over. This card will be $25, $50 overnight. No problem. Again, old cards benefit from being on the reserve list. There are plenty of old cards that are not valuable that are still on the reserve list and they're waiting their turn to go up in price. I can't tell you when that will happen, but I can tell you with certainty that they will spike. These older cards on the reserve list will spike. It's just a pattern. And if you catch the pattern early, you can take advantage of it because there's still very, very cheap bulk out there from old magic cards. Just like people didn't realize Power 9 was valuable before the internet, there are people who have no concept as to any hope that if you played during Homelands or you played recently in Magic, you don't, you cannot make the one-to-one -one connection that Homelands would be a valuable set. Or, you know, a set where you have five cards that are $5, $2, $3. I think that's not bad given the fact that people bought hundreds of booster packs of Homelands and therefore have probably dozens of these cards. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.